Hello everyone, my name is Rutvik Preek and welcome back to some more professional prep videos. So in this video we're going to talk more about calling methods building off of the last video, um, our first one of Unit 2. This is going to be our second one of Unit 2. So to start out, we're going to talk a little bit about a couple types of methods here. So we have a lot of history behind how we call these things method. They've methods. They've gone through many names. They've had functions, subroutines, procedures, etc. So um, we're going to dive more into coding here. However, if you are interested in the history behind how we got the name method in Java today, then please do email us and I will be happy to walk you through it. So today, um, we're mostly going to refer to the methods in this video as void methods and return methods. So let me talk a little bit about what that is, the difference between the two, and show you a couple of examples to get you to really understand it. So here we have we have the class car, and then this is the class cars. We'll come to that class later, but here we have the class car, and this is very similar to the code used in our last video. Uh, we wanted to maintain that uh, that it was uniform throughout, but this method right here, the public void set price, it's going to add 100 to the value of price. And right now is a good uh, moment for me to teach you quickly about the shortcut notations for addition. You can do this for any operator, really. Um, so price plus equals 100 is also code that will add 100 to the current value of price. Um, and if you wanted to add one in particular, then you can just do price plus plus. Um, that works for anything. You could do price minus minus, price minus equals 100. So that's just the shorthand notation. It'll work for any operator. Uh, we talked about the five operations of integer and real number division, or um, operations last time. So uh, for now, I'm just going to use the long form, though. So price equals price plus 100. So... Here, this method right here, set price, that's what you call a void method. Now, it adds 100 to the value of price, and it doesn't really return anything. Uh, you see the word void being used in the method header? That's obviously a clear indicator that this is going to be a void method. And a return method would be, for example, get price. Set methods are generally voids, and get, get methods are generally uh, returned. So... Um, here, we don't have the word return in the header. Instead, we have double, which is actually the data type that will be returned by this method. And in this code, we will return the value of price. So you see that keyword return telling you that it's going to be a return method. Mm, and also, now's a quick uh, chance to define a word for you. Procedural abstraction. It's knowing what a method does without really knowing how that method achieves its goal. We do that all the time with um, system.out.println. Um, we just use the method. We don't really know how it's actually um, put into place. So that's just a quick definition. And I also wanted to take this moment to say that all methods use parentheses, even if they don't really use parameters. So we talked about parameters in our last video. There's a parameter. Um, every single method you see here uses a set of parentheses, and when we call it, it also uses the parentheses. Every method uses parentheses, however, it doesn't always contain something. You see here, um, the, this one has a parameter. It doesn't always have a parameter, though. Here, we don't have a parameter. Um, now we're going to go through how to call some of these methods. So there are object methods and there are class methods, otherwise known as static methods. We'll talk more about how when to use each one in future videos. In this case, though, um, we create the object Toyota in our main method. Uh, you see that here we give the price of 5,000, and obviously in its double form there. Um, so Toyota, methods we use on Toyota are object methods because Toyo Toyota is, after all, an object. So Toyota.setPrice is an object method. And there you see um, that statement right there, Toyota.setPrice, is how to call um, that object method. In general, object methods, you call them with the object name plus the dot symbol. So object name is Toyota dot symbol, and then the method name, set price, with the parentheses, of course. And um, 
how to call class methods. This is a class method right here, cars.print message. This relates back to our class cars, and we have this method called print message. Um, it prints I like cars. Well, there's no need for an object here because this class just does one thing. It doesn't really matter. We don't even have a constructor method. We can't even create an object for this class um, unless we code another constructor method. But um, how to call class methods? You put the class name. So there's cars. And class methods are also called static methods, by the way. So you put the class name, which is cars. And then you put the dot operator, and then you put the method name with the parentheses, and that will call um, a class method. And of course, if we do run this, um, you probably predict the output there. We're going to get 5100 because we created a new car with a price of 5000 and we did set price on it. And as you can see, set price adds 100 and then we printed it using the price, which is what we talked about last video, how to print that without the memory address. We get 5100 and the I like cars is obviously going to come from this statement as it's coded to print I like cars, that method. So once again, more on when to use both later, most likely, but now we have a lot of methods and we're also we're going to go through these later we have many names for methods and we've already covered most of them but um we'll talk more about those later as well i'm going to cover one more right now and that's a constructor method that's a name that i used earlier in this video and now let me define it more for you this is a constructor method the constructor method has the same name as the class and it is simply used to construct these new objects here. Um, they can be overloaded, and in many cases they will. Because say that we wanted one of our constructor methods takes one parameter called price, another one takes no parameters, and another one takes, I don't know, price and mileage. So we can code each one differently. And an overloaded constructor, they'll all have the name car, since they all have to be named after the class. So that's what overloaded is. Car would be overloaded. Um, and that's your example. So lastly, I, I just want to talk about some errors that we'll be seeing. So an error where, say that we remove this semicolon, and it's going to print telling me semicolon expected. This is what you call a compiler error. The compiler will catch it at the compiling stage and will not execute this code yet. Um, we fix that, and we get no more errors, and we get what we wanted. However, there's also a runtime error, which is where um, the code will be caught in the middle of running the program, and then it will exit out. Um, then it'll show us an error. Java calls these runtime errors exceptions. So anytime you see exception, you know what that is. And we're going to go over one type of runtime error or exception right now, actually. So say that we put in, we want to create another object of the uh, Toyota um, or sorry, that's the car class. So let's do car BMW equals, and let's just call it null. Null basically, it means it has nothing. It doesn't have a value yet. Um, so that's obviously not good. You want to define them, but let's just put null for now. And then let's say we try to print BMW's value here, BMW.getPrice. Now, what's going to happen? Well, this, of course, this does not have an actual value. So it's going to run through this. It has no issue. So you can see it prints these. This also proves it's a runtime error because it's already ran this code here. But that code. But here, when we try to do this last print statement here, it's going to run into an issue. We're trying to print the um, BMW's price, but we haven't defined a price. Um, it's... BMW doesn't really have a value. It's null. So it's going to call what it calls a null pointer exception. And that just means that you have a null somewhere and you're trying to use it here. And there you see that keyword exception, which means it's a runtime error. So that's all for this video. I hope that you've enjoyed your little introduction to object-oriented programming. Um, this will obviously continue more, but um, unit 5 is all about writing classes, so we'll revisit this and add to it. But that's all. 
um, I got for this video. I'll see you next video where we'll learn about some Java graphics. Thank you everyone and please make sure to subscribe um, to our channel, like this video. Um, thank you everyone. <laughs>